There's fighting on the left and marching on the right. Don't look up to the sky. You're gonna die of fate. What do you think about that, Eduardo? Huh? A little ACDC action, man. Rock it out, Razor's Edge ties into the stuff. Anyway, hey, this is the prediction video for the Sergio Gabriel Martinez uh, fight with uh, Sergey Dzenrik. I'm gonna have to go with that anytime you got like five Z's in your name and stuff. Kind of hard to pronounce. I'm not German. Well, half German, but I'm not from Germany. Guardo, man. Anyway, this is for the March 12th fight. This is for the uh, ring uh, middleweight title, which is something that I uh, actually do kind of hold in, in, in high honor. So when you're fighting for that, they're basically saying this is for the best uh, middleweight out there. It's 160 pounds. So in this prediction vid, I will go over both fighters, and I will give my uh, prediction at the end. In saying that, I can't believe I didn't do this video earlier. I've been saying that a lot, but nah, I'm, I'm, I've been busy, and I apologize. So we'll start off with Sergio Martinez, who is, uh, at this point, he's fighting the absolute best you could say he's ever fought. I mean, he's coming off that uh, surprise, amazing knockout over Paul Williams. And, you know, at 36, he almost seems like he's ageless, like he's going to be that kind of guy, especially with the way he fights. Um... Can his star get any higher? Can he, can he be any better than he is right now? I mean, it's, you know, you started wondering about it, you know, in the first Paul Williams fight, and you saw it, and you're like, wow, you know, he should have won that fight. He didn't, but he should have won that fight. And then you saw the, the Pavlik, you saw the, I'm sorry, man, and you saw the domination of Pavlik, and. Uh, and then the Williams, you know, rematch. So, I mean, he's only appears to have gotten better every time. And like I said, at 36, this is uh, very impressive. He uh, he is a slick boxer. He's a good fighter. His D is okay, but what more can you expect? You know, he does hold his hands too low, but a lot of times you think he might be trying to do that to lead you in so he can go ahead and tee off on you. You know, because he's a very good counter puncher. He brings... He brings it. He gets in, he gets his shots off, and he gets back out. Uh, he's very good at setting up his shots, and his speed is very deceptive. He comes in, he kind of lulls you, and then the hands are blazing, and then before you know it, he's already dealt you, tagged you a couple times. Um, he's very accurate with his shots and his counters. He's, uh, and if you want to know about that, ask Paul Williams how he feels right now about that. Um, he has good with his right hooks, and he has a very stinging jab. As in case you say, with well, right hook, what are you talking? He's a southpaw. Just throwing that out there for you, you know. And when you're fighting an elite southpaw, it's totally different than fighting an elite right-hander. At least you're kind of experienced with fighting right-handers. But he's not. He's a southpaw. Um, his last real loss was over 10 years ago. So you're looking at a guy that's got basically all the tools going in. He's got stamina out the roof. You know, massive, massive stamina. And uh, he moves very, very well. He uses his movement. He moves. And what I mean by that, you know, he's coming and he's using side angles. He doesn't move straight back. He moves at an angle, which puts you in an awkward position as you're throwing, and he can counter and hit you better. If you go straight back, the only place you can go is straight back. And that lets the guy come straight forward into you and eventually you're going to hit the wall. Well, it's the ropes in this case, but you know what I'm saying. Eventually you run out of room. But if you're always using angles, it creates it, the appearance that there is a lot more room in there as he's moving around. Let's go over to Sergey uh, Zenrik. I'll probably just call him Sergey from here on in. <laughs> Anyways, he's 37-0-0 with 23 knockouts for a 62% knockout ratio. And when you look at that, you're like, man, this dude's awesome. I mean, he's a southpaw, like Williams. He's six foot with only a 68-inch reach, and that's a short reach for a guy that's six foot tall. When you're six foot, you'd like to see that 76, you know, 77-inch reach. That's kind of long, but you would like to see that for a fighter. I mean, Paul Williams, 6'1", he had an 82-inch reach. 
but at 68 inches, you know, for his fighting style, that's kind of a short reach. Uh, he has good power. He has nice, nice wins over Daniel Santos, Daniel uh, Dawson, Joel, Joel Julio. These aren't like top, top fighters, but they are decent fighters. Uh, he's defended the WBO title six times, um, and that's the 154 light middleweight title. He's defended that six times. He's been ducked by a few fighters, but overall, you know, he's been at 154 for 11 years. You know, you have to go back to like 99 to find a fight where he fought over 154, or, you know, like an actual middleweight fight against a true middleweight. And I think that's going to be a, a big thing for him. Um, he's not very active. He's only had um, six fights, is it? Or eight fights in the last six years. And he hasn't, he's only had one fight since 2008. Um, so, and being no spring chicken, he is 35 years old. These, these kind of uh, aren't working well for him in his corner. Uh, he has an extensive amateur background. He did very, very well. I mean, he was on the Olympic uh, team for his country and Ukraine. And when you look at all the uh, uh, stuff like that, he carries some of that over into the pros. He has a very high deep. He has a, a very good jab. He pops that out. He works very well with that. He keeps it very active. Um, he has good timing, but he is open for straight punches. You know, with his D, the way he holds it, he's open for the straight punches, not so much around the side. And with that, as, as we talk about, you know, him, you know, being open for the straight shots, one of the flaws that he does have is the fact that he does move, and when he moves, he moves straight back. There's not a lot of head movement in there. It's more when he does move his head, he's pulling it straight back. He's not moving it to the side or anything like that in order to actually slip punches. It's more to back away from punches. So when a fighter does apply pressure to him, you know, he struggles with that. There's a uh, fighter that actually did um, apply pressure. That was the Konsi fight, um, you know, that he struggled with because that guy was constantly uh, coming forward and pressuring him, and he struggled with that, and he did not... Uh, handled that very well he won a majority decision uh as looking into it as well you know he does counter with the right hook but he doesn't work the body very well so while he he has a lot of the upper upper parts you know that's more of the amateur style it's like he never really fully came out of the amateur style so he focuses way too much on throwing the punches high and doesn't work the body at all um, he is an accurate puncher he doesn't waste a lot of his punches when he does come in there and he's throwing Everything that he does will be uh, uh, things. Aguardo, get out of the fridge, man. Come on. Come on, man. I'm trying to do a video over here. You're going in fridge. I apologize for that. Anyway, as he's going in, he throws a lot of one or one twos. You know, he doesn't really throw a lot of combos in there. It's picking his shots, landing the straight shots in there in solid. As I said earlier, he struggles with pressure but he tends to hold his composure. He doesn't necessarily lose that when he's doing it. He doesn't freak out when somebody's coming at him, but at the same time, you know, that is a downside for this. Uh, he will struggle with bigger fighters. Uh, this is the first Southpaw I also would like to point out in the last five years. So not only is he uh, he's not actively fighting Southpaws, this one just happens to be the number one middleweight in the world. So that's he's going to have problems. So as we're looking at that and for the prediction when you start coming with that, the fact that Zernix or Sergey is coming up and this is his first middleweight fight, you know, in eleven years. So really it's his first middleweight fight. He's fighting the number one guy. He struggles with any pressure that's put on him. He doesn't necessarily have that one punch knockout power. He has uh, problems with movement, dealing with movement. He's not the fastest fighter out there. I see uh, Martinez easily winning a unanimous decision on this. And if you were a betting guy, if you wanted to put a little money on a knockout, I wouldn't be uh, too apt to say, no, that wouldn't happen, just because of the overall quality of opponents that each fighter has fought. Okay, so 
Hope you uh, enjoyed this. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and uh, it's a big ragu. Woo! Out.